Okay, so I would like to apologize to the asshole who writes this stuff for being late. I already apologized, asshole. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Well, double fuck you for making me watch this shit. I had to watch it too, dumbass. Fair enough. So, as you can most likely tell, neither of us are happy about having to watch this one. Now, I will admit, there are far worse episodes out there you could watch. I mean, Seahorse Seashell Party still exists. But this crosses a lot of lines. And I mean a lot of lines. And this can't be ignored. Well, since both me and the other asshole had to sit through this shit, eat a dick, shithead. This is fresh air. So we start off with the Griffins' home, and seriously, it's been four seconds and we're already stuck in a cutaway. And not only that, it's some stupid, stereotypical European bullshit. Chris comes in and asks Peter if they would like to spend some time together. Okay, are you a television set or the internet? No. Oh, then no. No, thank you. But you promised we'd go fishing. Ah, uh, Chris, I was just lying to you so you'd go away. But if you leave me alone now, I'll give you a billion dollars. You've got a deal! Peter, you know, it might help Chris to be able to spend some time with his father. Did you just make me agree with Brian Griffin? But yeah, that aside, this is a prime example of how the characters have changed for the worse. Peter used to give a shit about his kids, and now they're just a nuisance to him. I can't understand how people can still like this character, but I digress. Mainly because I just want to get through this. Oh, and there were two more cutaways between all of that. So later that night, Lois finds out that her father hurt himself by, at the mall by running up the down escalator. Miss Babs has her work cut out for her. Actually, Mom can't take care of him. She's out of town doing a photo shoot for the cover of Vane's magazine. Lois says that she can't take care of him either, and then we get survey says another fucking cutaway. At this point, the family realizes that Chris isn't at dinner that night, so Lois goes to check on him, and Peter gets, I'll give you one guess. Lois goes to talk to Chris about how Peter has trouble expressing his emotions, and then Peter shoots that idea down. You too. He just has trouble expressing his emotions. I love Mike and Molly. I love Mike, and I also love Molly, and I don't care who knows it. But Lois convinces Chris to take care of his grandpa. You're not going to kill yourself, are you? That would be a severe black mark on my record as a mom. Oh, I'd have to make up stories of a severe mental illness. Make it seem a miracle you made it this long. I could do that. Okay, first thing, the fuck? Second thing, the fuck? Third thing, as far as your record as a mother goes... Meg, would you please? Is this coming from my role model mother? The shoplifter, the drug addict, the porn star, the whore who let Gene Simmons and Bill Clinton climb inside her? Uh, my point is that with all the irresponsible, reckless, idiotic behavior in your past, that somehow, <laughs> somehow you have the nerve, the arrogance to consistently and ruthlessly point out my shortcomings. You're my mother, and you took a child's trust and smashed it into bits in a 17-year-long mission to destroy something that you killed a long time ago. Thank you, Meg. So Chris goes to take care of Carter, and we find out that mostly he's just really bored. The worst part about it is I can't have sex. God, I wish there was a way I could just do it myself. You know, just, just to be done and napping within four minutes. Let me show you something. That. Was. Amazing! Yo, The last thing I wanted to think about was Carter masturbating. Cool! Hey, next time I want to try it with my hand. No! Okay, I take that back. That's the last thing I wanted to think about! So we get a couple clips of Chris and Carter having fun. Sadly, this is the most genuine relationship I've seen out of this show in a long time.
So after hanging out for a while, Carter finally drops Chris off at home. Carter is so grateful for Chris's help that he wants to give him some money, but is completely shocked when Chris tells him that he doesn't need the money, and that he just had fun hanging out with his grandpa. Then we get this. Hey grandpa, check it out! When I make my elbow like this, it looks like women's private parts. Oh, Chris, you just have a way of looking at things that's delightfully fresh. <laughs> we're not supposed to be doing this. I bet we're not supposed to be doing this. Oh, how could I forget? This is Family Guy. We can't have any kind of touching scene without ruining it with some stupid joke at the end. Carter walks in with Chris and announces to the family that he's going to change his will to give everything to Chris when he dies. Kind of a big decision to make in 30 seconds. Not that I blame him, Pierre and Lois don't fucking deserve it, but still, maybe you should think about it for a minute. Daddy, you're seriously leaving your entire estate to Chris? I mean, what about Mom? I promise she'll be dead before I am. I promise. But You know, I feel like I should be shocked or something, but this is the same bitch that left you for Ted Turner the moment you were broke, so yeah, fucking kill her. Brian tries to speak up about giving the money to Cherry, and then makes a total ass of himself. I would give all the money to charity. Oh, yeah? Which charity? Well, there are just so many that do such great work. Name just one. Um, well, you know, poor green whale guns books. You are such a fraud. Thank you, Carter. We cut to later that night, and Peter is kind of pissed about Carter willing his money to Chris. Peter, did you marry me for my money? Of course not, Lois, but... The way you treat your family and the way you waste all your money stated that, that was a lie. Peter's solution is that both he and Lois need to suck up to Chris to get at his money. This includes dressing like Chris, trying to act young to appeal to him, and cutting the head off of a deaf kid for him. In his defense, he thought it was Chris's bully. Oh wait, THERE IS NO DEFENSE FOR THAT! I mean, holy fucking Neptune, dude! Peter ends up at the clam exhausted from trying to suck up to Chris. After explaining the situation to Joe and Quagmire, they both mention that whoever Chris ends up with later in life is going to be a lucky man or woman. Also, the implied incest from Seahorse Seashell Party goes a lot farther than I wanted it to. Chris, our bath is ready. I, uh, I don't, I don't know what to do now. I, I don't have the parenting skills necessary to deal with this. I say we never speak of this again. I. I might move. Okay, I'll say this again. Ew. Peter comes to the conclusion that the best way to get at his son's money is to marry him. Um, what was it you said earlier? Peter, did you marry me for my money? Of course not, Lois, but- Uh, yeah, does anybody know the number for bullshit? What's worse about this scene is that Peter isn't even trying to hide why he wants to marry his son. Time to settle down and simplify things, like maybe having one ATM card and one bank account. Say yours. Seriously, have you no shame? Of course he doesn't, this is Family Guy. Chris realizes that if he marries his dad, he can get him to spend more time with him, and this kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Over the years, a lot of Family Guy characters haven't changed from what they started out as, but Chris didn't really get that treat. He's always been the shy, kind of stupid teenage boy that we all have always known him to be. He's been put in many different situations over the years, but he's never really strayed from his path. I've always had a soft spot for Chris, and this episode is one of the many examples of how good Family Guy used to be. His relationship with Peter was pretty normal for the most part, at least as normal as this show would get. This episode pisses all over that relationship for the sake of a half-baked plot. The fact that he has to marry his own father to get him to spend time with him really breaks my heart. Okay, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Rant over. Chris and Peter go to pick up wedding gifts, and we see Peter checking out another kid's ass. Holy wackazoli. Dad! What? Don't what me? You know what you did. Hey, I may be your husband and your dad, but I'm still a man. Oh great, now he's a fucking pedophile. Are you marrying Chris for his money or to get into his pants? Because at this point, I'm honestly not sure. The next scene is just Peter naming off a bunch of wedding cliches. Next. 
I'm excited for your first dance. And now we're ready to add music. What's your song? You know, I've given it a lot of thought, and I went with the most romantic song ever. Stars and Stripes Forever by John Philip Sousa. March, 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 march! Can you feel the soldiers, Chris? So many have fallen, and this is why they were fighting. For a man to marry his son in a state with enough trees around that nobody can see what's going on. I'm not even going to try to make sense of that one. Just, just go. After that, we cut right to the way because even the show wants this episode to be over. Before they can exchange vows, Lois interrupts the wedding to convince Peter it's not normal. But Mom, I want to do this. What? I know he's marrying me for my money, but I don't care. That is fucking sad. Dad and I spent more time together planning this wedding than we ever have before. That is even sadder. And after that, Peter just flips a bitch and is back to normal because this show has to end the same way it began. Yeah. And I guess I learned it's wrong to take your son to Vermont under false pretenses to try to marry him for his inheritance. You, you should have known that. No shit! Okay, so let me make one thing clear. This is not an episode of Family Guy. No, 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 no. This is not an episode of Family Guy. This is an assassination. This is a fucking character assassination. If you've watched last year's Family Guy Month, you'll know that the changes to Peter make me the saddest of all the characters. Over the years, Peter has been slowly changed into the gigantic asshole that we all love to hate. But this episode punches old Peter in the balls, sticks him in a coffin, nails it shut, throws it in a fire, records his screams, pisses on the ashes, and then goes to find a necromancer and bring him back to life just so they can do it all over again. I need to go scrub my mind for this episode. I never want to think about this one again. Hey, clockwork, I got vodka. That's my cue.